wasn't in the jacuzzi. It's in the jacuzzi. Look at your life. Hey, what's going on, fuckers? Welcome to another episode of the Inner Monologue. Don't forget to like and subscribe us. Follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Uh, so let's get to it, boys. Um, <laughs> let, I know that normally we, we start off with a joke, but I'm pretty sure that that entrance was a joke enough. Um, why don't we see what's... Uh, well, I'm, I'm definitely going to go back to it. That was but, awesome. uh, what's... What's going on with your, um, oh, I see that um, Melody just had a, a birthday. She's eight now. Yep, today's her birthday. So she is eight years old. Yet? Her, her shot? No. No, no, no have shot you bought yet. a shotgun yet? Oh, a shotgun. Um, you can borrow mine. I hope I'm still a few years from that. Hopefully. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure you are, but you got you to gotta train to use it. Yep. Yeah, you need to be accurate so you don't hit shit else. Remember, you want you buckshot. You gotta be Denzel Washington. Surgical with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was yeah. one of my favorite scenes in that movie. I bet it was. What I bought instead was an uh, Among Us themed birthday cake. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'll send you guys some pictures of it. But I found this um, place in Concord that does custom cakes. And I saw that she had done an Among Us theme before. So I was like, we gotta do something for Melody. Uh, drove up there, got the cake, and it didn't have a lid. <laughs> it was just like, oh. like so, so my wife had to hold it on the drive back, making sure like nothing happened to it. It's was like it the, survived. And, was that the most nerve wracking drive you ever had in your life? Yeah, you, that had to be the time. most tense drive ever. I, was it I bet you, of- you you probably touched your brake lighter than you ever touched. So I was, yeah, was like, so. I'm, I'm gonna drive better than usual, and she's just like. You sure? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you it's, not, it's not the best pay road, so you know. Likely yeah. survive, survive. But yep, that's pretty much our weekend. Just celebrating all these birthday. That's pretty dope, though. So what's a what's a COVID party for a birthday look like these days? Just the family. Just the family. It was, it was just the four of us. And this that's was good. Like- I need a oh, if it wasn't a Zoom and party. it's gone. Oh yeah, no. But Vanessa got her first slice of cake, and of course, like baby Zoo, she had it like all over her face. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> she got sugar wasted. Come here. Do you got anything for us, Julio? Uh, I do. I just can't run off the top of my head. My Dumbass and write down for one. Oh, brother, this guy so that's a note. That's a note for me, dog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no for me, dog. Right. Uh, no, you know, well, last week was pretty much chill. I'm just going to get ready to go to Vegas at the end of this week. Nice. With your mom? Mom and the girlfriend, yeah. <laughs> Dope. It's worth it. Yo, what you left, fool? Who the fuck it's, is so funny, you guys? I think it's wonderful. He's, he's still, like, really close to his mom and can take my trips together to the world's sexiest place wow. yeah that's, that's why I, I laugh like, i feel like i'm gonna okay. be sitting on you, you and i you and i both know how it goes down in vegas true sure true, true, true. i'm going with a girlfriend too so that's gonna be interesting the one, also so the one place the one stop place adding you'll get shot down for it's already sounding weird right okay. the one place where we get shot down for being 21 Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh yeah, but you, it's easy to get loose things. Like remember how we, I thought that my mom's car got stolen because we forgot where we parked it. You yeah. dumbass. <laughs> we were laughing. You guys got a hangover moment. Yeah. No, but um, speaking of weird things getting stolen, right? Um, do you guys know what the benefit about a guy that's uncircumcised is? Mm-mm. It's uh, if you look at it this way, it's the one hood your girlfriend can't steal. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, turtle that shit up. The boys getting ready to commit a felony down there. Right, What's going so- on with you, Marcus? 
All right, so th- as y'all y'all know, this is my last. This was my last week um, training, and today was my first day. So we ended up catching one guy in the last week. Um, first off, I ended up following a guy who was who, who I thought was going to steal because he did what I can only describe as weird shit. Um, standing in and out no, for like no, five no, minutes, no. grabbing random shit, looking at one item only. Then he went all the way to the other side of the store, left the basket with all the shit in it, took one item, went back all the way to the other side of the store where he started, found another basket, and started putting more shit in that basket. And before I could continue seeing if he actually stole some shit, I got pulled away because my coworker walked ass backwards into someone stealing shit. He was like, hey, uh, I'm going to need you to come up front. Got a guy stealing. I was like, what do you steal? He's like, crab meat. I was like, crab meat? Mm-hmm. And fucking, so I get up there. It's this big ass black dude wearing all black and a fucking black apron. I'm like, where'd he stick it? He was like, in the fucking apron. I was like, yeah, I could have guessed that. <laughs> he didn't tuck it in his rolls or nothing. That's crazy. So mm-hmm. fucking... Like, he tells me, he was like, all right, this is yours. You're going to apprehend him. I was like, I'm going to do what now? Like, go get him. I'm like, well, fuck. Like, why don't you get him? He's like, I don't want him to get spooked and ditch the merch. I was like, yeah, bullshit. He's a big-ass black dude. You just don't want to get punched in the face. So he exits. I walk up to him, slide smooth up to him. And it's like, excuse me, sir. Come back inside, please. No argument. That motherfucker's like, okay. I was like, damn, bro, like, you could have fought at least. Shit. Like, throw a temper tantrum. Is your adrenaline <laughs> pumping, boy? You big-ass teddy bear. And then when he turns around, here's my coworker. It's like, hey, remember me? Oh, God. It's like, do you got to say that to everybody? <laughs> it's like, I've been trying to catch this motherfucker for a year. I was like, <clears throat> you, oh, that, that, that kind of sounds like your shit at your job. If you've been trying to catch him for a year, but okay. Uh, is your coworker loss prevention or just like a regular store employee? Uh oh, retard alert! Oh, that was an actual question. Yeah. What the hell do you think? Hey, pal. Store employee. You just no. blowing from Stupid Town? <laughs> Dude, okay, that just makes the fact that he sucks at his job even worse. No, oh, yeah, apparently he's the best. But, no, the reason why he asks if he remembers him is because every time he goes into that store, he doesn't usually steal. But he stole from the store that he used to work at. He stole a speaker. That's how he knew to watch his ass, mm. which is weird because I was like, every time he came in here, he didn't steal. So he just watched his ass until he finally did. He was like, yeah. The only reason the only reason shit changed, one, this dude runs a catering business, and he shops at Costco a lot, and he buys a shit ton of stuff. So... He has a party to do this past weekend. So he bought a bunch of chicken, fucking ribs, all that shit. And I guess, yeah, like, well, why the hell did you steal, like, the crab meat? He was like, I don't know, man. I just. I just wanted to see if I could do it. He's like, you still remember still, stealing that speaker? He was like, yeah. I was like, damn, bro, I wouldn't have admitted to that. Like, you already in trouble. There's no need to tack on any more information. He self incriminated. Wow. So fucking, yeah, we get his shit suspended. And then at the last minute, he was like, can I just pay for this shit? And like, we call this square. He was like, well, normally we would if you hadn't already exited the building. I was like, damn, bro, you full on dick mode. This dude's got a business. Now he's fucked. Um, Better go to Sam's. Let him go to Sam's. I I was about to say, (laughs) better go to Sam's. Oh, man. And here's the shit that's fucked up. So he told the dude in the office, he was like, oh, don't worry. I'm not going to tell anybody about this. Five minutes later, this motherfucker showing his picture to everybody. Damn! Damn. I was like, damn, bro, you couldn't even let you couldn't even let the body get cold before your ass actually started telling people about it. I mean, that's like that's like a girl telling that she's not going to tell her girlfriends when you come quick. Uh-huh. It's OK. It happens to everybody. I won't tell nobody. <laughs> Five minutes later, she's turning around texting everybody. Yeah, five minutes later, that bitch was already texting her friends while she was telling you that. <laughs> you won't believe. 35 seconds. 35.8 seconds. That's, That's how a long new time. record. That's mm-hmm. a new record. She pulls a stopwatch from her pocket. Damn! 
The only thing I have to say with you guys this week, I'm pretty sure that I told you guys last week that my schedule changed. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before you finish. Um, What's that over there? Is that a foot? Nope. Is that a foot? Oh, no, I I was looking at more left. It looks like some kind of sexual vibrator. That's what you would hope for, huh? Yeah. Back to the center. You would hope for anything sexual at this point. <laughs> the PS5 came in, boys. Nice. Dope. And to add insult to injury, this girl ordered me like six fucking games. How's that insult to injury? Nice. That's not dope. No, it's dope. The reason why I say insult to injury is because at first I thought it couldn't get better than this. And then she was like, oh, then I probably shouldn't tell you about all the other games that's coming. It was like other games. That's amazing. <laughs> You are big time, bro. Bro, I played the Halo thing while I was unboxing this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that is the that is the gamer national anthem, and I don't give a fuck who, uh, who says otherwise. Did you make the TikTok video for it? Of course I did. Nice. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, other, I can't top a PS5. All I got was weekends off now at work, so it was pretty cool being able to like actually go out with my wife. Okay, so yeah. Strictly Monday to Friday now. Yep, strictly Monday through Friday. So it's a lot better than trying to piece together half dates and shit here and there. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I got turned down by American Airlines. Well, you yeah, got to turn down their turn down service. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. What'd well, you I mean, do? Doesn't it? You walk in saying, make... "Would you like to astro glide my face?" No. Mm. No, they had a management position open. It was open to everybody. I put it for it. They're like, uh, "You're not qualified." They just said no. Yeah. Wait, they had a management position for. For like that Central Square Airport for like. Uh, just managing like the personnel that work for American Airlines at the airport, and my resume supposedly matched what they were looking for, which is the message I got from like their recruiter. And I, Meaning they were looking for Hispanic, probably. Anyway, I go and put in, you know, I fill out the application and everything, and then like Sunday morning, I get an email. Yeah, uh, we're moving on with someone else. I'm like, all right, fuck you guys. Did you even get an interview? No. You didn't even what get the fuck do they the- mean? What do they mean we're moving on with someone else? That's what I said. I was like, that should be funny as hell. Before they ask you to move on. Right? That was just like that letter I got from fucking Securitas when I applied to them. They were like, like sorry, um, you're a qualified candidate, but uh, we're going to go with other people. I was like, bitch, you didn't even interview me. Right. Right. So, guys, um, quick question. Do you guys know what men and and attire have in common? Mm-mm. No, they they both have a little pipe that you occasionally have to blow air into. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Pump it up. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So what's go- what's going on in those Smoky Mountains, Julio? Uh, apparently, uh, a black bear in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee decided to go onto a couple's deck. And jump in their hot tub. He even went ahead and turned on the bubbles and everything and had a joyful time. Bro, it was Yogi. It was fucking Yogi Bear. Yep. Yogi decided to go into the tub for some for some relaxation. Hey, so it was the, the same black guy that I was trying to steal the crab meat at, he did a bit uh, <laughs> at Mark's oh. job. <laughs> <laughs> they could be related, but I don't know. Maybe black we'll see. Bear. So we have video of this, huh? Yep, we have video of this yeah. Black Bear. Let's check it out. All right, let's take a look. In the jacuzzi. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I wasn't. I'm glad I wasn't in the jacuzzi. It's in the jacuzzi. <laughs> There's a black bear, a wild black bear, in the jacuzzi, getting warm. He's a wild one. Trebony was on vacation with his wife in Tennessee's Great Smoky Mountains last Saturday when he captured these priceless images. The animal relaxed for 15 minutes and then headed back into the wilderness. Who would want to? Who blames the bear? <laughs> you warmed it up for him, buddy. Bear- our boys and we're back. So you guys see him just like flopping his arms and shit and like before he got in, he's like turns on the jets and everything. Mm-hmm. I feel like that bear was nope. trained. 
Yeah, the circus bear. That's when the Ring Ringing Brothers just released them back into the wild. <laughs> he, did, he, he did almost he pull retired. a freaking <clears throat> gayness yeah. into the damn hot tub, though. Right. Yeah. Damn, he turned it on and then jumped on the on jumped up on the edge and was like cannonball. <laughs> You can tell he's probably like rubbing your looked film. Up at, looked yeah. up at the judges like tense. So Jose, um, what's up with that uh, kid that had basically was acquitted for beating the thirteen-year-old to death? Whoa. Yes. So I'm I'm not sure what city it was, but it's in SoCal, Riverside County. So two years ago, there was a uh, two thirteen-year-olds that were uh, basically killed. Uh, Someone had been bullying. So they have been bullying him for like over two years. And then they sucker punched him and the kid fell, hit his head in the concrete and just re- never, never regained his conscience. So they were trialed and the judge found them basically, basically the, he, the judge found them guilty. But the only charge that these kids are facing for murder is 150 hours community service. So what? No jail time. Uh, white kids, right? White kids. Yeah, I think they're white kids. Well, of course, they're just, you know, they're, they're just, damn. What, boys will be boys? Yeah, bro. Man, I don't think my yeah, parents I was... said boys will be boys and you can get away with murder. Yeah, bro, Bart Simpson got away with worse. But it's just insane to me to think that, like, anybody, whether you're black, Asian, white, America, uh, Mexican, like, at, at 13, you have a, some sense of what you're doing. A pretty good one. Uh-huh. I mean, like, there's still plenty of things that you're oblivious and you end up doing dumb shit. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure you know that murder's wrong. Like, killing any. You kill an ant, you know you're killing an ant at 13. Like, you know you've ended a life. The word you're looking for is sentient being. Okay. Sentient. Any, any sentient being. I mean, shit. How many how many insects have you crushed under your feet, not knowing it? So at that point, you can't really worry about every single thing that dies, right? But man, yeah, like, but you don't do it consciously, like exactly. They knew they knew that punching that kid could cause harm, so the yeah, intent right. to cause harm was there. The fact that it escalated to the kid dying doesn't doesn't um, justify the idea that like, well, I didn't mean to kill him. No, but you killed him. Yeah, regardless of if you meant it or not, you did. Yeah, like, like what do you guys think what the punishment would have been if they were 18? Oh, you know what? They probably would have got manslaughter. House arrest. They probably would have got, would have got house arrest. I doubt it, bro, because look at this. Look at, look at what's going on with George Floyd. It's gotten to the point where the dude is facing trial, right? Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until the judge, the judge that was actually going to see the case actually... Um, decided that the two charges that were originally dropped needed to be put back on there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But part of that, that police officer was also just going to get basically a slap on the wrist. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Now, we can't, we can't sit here and actually believe that there isn't two, ju- two judicial systems in America. Oh, definitely not. Which is yeah. why I told my wife this morning that I was really worried, right? Because, like... Imagine these kids get slapped on the wrist. So imagine what's going to happen if the, poli- if the police officer that killed George Floyd, because that was manslaughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Call, it, call, it, call it what you want, accidental, whatever. No, it's manslaughter, because you had damn near nine full minutes. And the idea that they're trying to say that it was an opioid overdose. It you gotta help. Hey, you could have fucking Narcan the dude right Like after. they said, they said he had fentanyl in his system, which mm-hmm. okay, I get, but still kneeling on the dude's neck for God knows how long probably didn't help his chances in surviving. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure it didn't. Uh, and I heard like because I, I was watching a pot, uh, lot of with Crowder, and they were t- they were basically covering the damn trial from today, and he was basically stating how it kept saying like the they kept saying that this is how they they were trained in the academy to put the knee on the neck. It's not something they should be doing. And even the damn captain said that, oh, they weren't trained to do this, but it's actually in the damn hand guide. They actually show the video of like subduing the suspect. And apparently something he neglected to do was once he took his knee off, he was supposed to roll him into a recovery position. Yep. Which even then, who, 
like, oh, so he forgot to do a re- recovery position. He still nailed on the dude's neck. And, and once the handcuffs and the dude are on, kept what, saying was the necess- what was the need? You know what I mean? That once the handcuffs yeah. are on, it's not like he's going to get up and run away. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes, he is. A, like Apparently, he is a known violent criminal. Fine. But you got handcuffs on him. He is basically subdued. But here's the thing. In the heat of the moment, you probably don't know that about him. No, they knew. So it, it brings me back to our original One of those story, officers right? have actually had run-ins with him. Mm. The one he kept saying, please don't shoot me, bro. He was the one he was basically uh, afraid of. But, but it brings me back to the original story that we were talking about is that it's not very surprising that these kids got a slap on the wrist. Because right. in America, and I'll tell you this from, from experience, right? Because one time I was mugged at the bar station. And actually was able to like fend like fend off my mugger. But because the person that was mugging me was a homeless white person, when the police officer showed up, he drew the gun on me. Jesus. And if it wasn't for innocent if it wasn't for bystanders that were there that saw what actually happened. You probably could have got shot. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it so the idea that like these kids, like because I was I was in middle school, y'all. When this happened, Dude. you know what I mean? And I was like taking on a full on adult homeless person. So this idea that like we look at children of color as more mature and stronger, they, they almost look at us as animals. They look at us as criminals without without prejudice whatsoever. Because let's, let's be real, like there's there's cases all over America where these same kids that were 13 would have been tried as adults if they were of color. Yep, 100%. Yep. One, of my, one of my, like, least favorite memories growing up is, uh, you guys remember the old Wiener Wiener Stencil by Holmes Middle School near my house? Mm-hmm. Well, one day I'm walking home in the rain, right, I got, like, this big-ass umbrella with me, and this freaking, this kid, about the same age, maybe a year older, Ran up behind me. I couldn't tell if it was a real gun or a BB gun, whatever. But he puts like a gun to the back of my head because he wants my fucking umbrella, right? Mm-hmm. As that's happening, I have a Contra Costa County Sheriff's deputy, and I'm saying this on video, and I've said it multiple times. I've even said it in interviews when I interviewed for police departments in the past. Drive past me, look in my direction, and said fuck it, and kept on driving. And he's a black man. The kid behind you is black as well. But he gave no shits that I had a fucking gun in the back of my head. And I got pistol whips. I didn't want to give the dude the fucking umbrella. Like, what are you, a pussy? Not you, him. No, I know. I fought like, the Did you off. really mug a dude for an umbrella? Like, you, I'm sorry, you a bitch made dude on that one. Well, a couple months later, he got into a fight in the middle of the street where he ended up like taking his shirt off and was like, Pretty much, like, had no clothing from the waist up. He ended up getting tased by Sam Pablo PD and got arrested for, like, this big-ass fight that he started. So, right, you know, justice eventually came to him. But to that cop, it's like, dude, you're a fucking bitch. Speaking of children getting in trouble, right? Mm-hmm. Let's uh, go ahead and move on to this six-year-old that got arrested for picking a flower. It seems a oh. fucking Whoa. tulip. A fucking tulip. What was it, someone's? Private property. Yeah, but still, really, you You're called fucking... the cops on a six-year-old for picking one fucking flower that will nah. grow back. <laughs> like I didn't know these were two hundred thousand dollar fucking flowers on your Are fucking they? lawn. No. I was just pretty like, holy sure shit! There's sure two thousand hundred. There's two hundred thousand dollar tulips out there. Like, bro, we need to Ooh. we need to diss this shit and start getting into flower games, <laughs> son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. get these seeds. Let's go buy some land and start growing. I'll get the nursery. <laughs> I'll steal the oh. flowers. And like the kid, like so they they <laughs> they even tried the kid. Car. You, you guys oh. got to you, you just got to sell like two of them and you can bail me out. <laughs> <laughs> like they even tried the damn kid, dude. Like, and it was. <clears throat> Like, I'm assuming because the reason why they tried the kid is because the parents missed the um, arraignment and sent it to trial. So this kid was sitting up, like, hey, this shit went like, to trial and shit. Yeah, how? 
What? Ridiculous. Now, over the, over now, a two? Apparently, this is what I heard. Like, like apparently, this has happened all over the place in what is it, Minnesota, North Carolina, where the, the judges usually Minnesota. just throw the case out. But they said like this girl was like just like they didn't have like no like like eight like no attention span at all. So she was just sitting there coloring and shit. Why the yeah, case was sick. Sick. And in fact, we got video. We don't got video of the kid. We got someone discussing the shit. I couldn't find actual video of the damn the the, the whole the kid kid drawing. Drawing. It's yeah. all good, bro. Let's check this shit out. I yeah, hope he throws out mad pieces on those drawings. Mm-hmm. I do yes. want to focus on something, and I hate to bring us all the way down, but North Carolina. Look at your life. Yeah. I, I hate to keep going back mm. to it, but look at your life, North Carolina. A six-year-old under mm-hmm. arrest. Ask me why. Ask yeah. me why. It's why? ridiculous. What'd he do? At the bus stop. What'd he do? Picked a tulip. Mm-hmm. Picked a tulip. A beautiful mm. flower out of somebody's mm. yard. And so North Carolina yeah. um, is, is a state who has the, the youngest age where, where kids can be charged, criminally charged. Six? Mm-hmm. Look at your life. Six. This is what we're doing now. For picking and then, children. and just reading some of the articles, it is so ignorant. Okay, in all states, most mm-hmm. of these states have issues, and I have a real issue with you know legislating that you can pick up a kid who's even sixteen years old, and they're automatically automatically charged as an adult. Either you're an adult or you're a child. Okay, and we can talk about brain right. development and cognitive skills and all of these things. But age six, and if you read some of the articles and some of the data on this, it talks about how all of these kids are in the system, right? And it's thousands of them because the system's being used Mm -hmm. to, uh, the excuse is to address other issues. Maybe something else is going on at home. We want to bring them in because of this. You don't need to criminally charge a child to help them. It's the same argument people are having when it comes to police reform and reimagining policing or defunding police. You don't need to send a squad team out there for somebody who's having a mental health issue. So it's just so sick to Mm -hmm. me. Picked a tulip at the bus stop. Mm. Maybe wanted to give it to his teacher. I don't know. But is now... In court, the kids in court going through the yeah. system, and I just don't. And they're talking about we need reform, we need reform. Maybe we do need reform, but you could just not be stupid, really. You really, uh, re- it, it, who it's common the sense, right? It, Sharon, oh, it's common goodness. sense, right? I mean, first of all, if you're the police, you see the six year old boy, he picked a tulip. Why are you arresting him and why are you charging him? Why is he in court? You're talking about the damage <sighs> that you can do. You're talking about the cognitive skills, yep. the damage you can do to a child yep. to put him through the system. He has no idea what's going on, but you've already given him uh, the head start, so to speak. You've already given him the, uh, the training shoes uh, of what it's like to be in the yep. system. Why You're would you criminal, take this little six. boy home if he's done something wrong? Exactly. And yeah. we're back. All right, bro. That 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 just further proves the point that I was making in that last story that before this one, right? Right. It does. Dude, it's a fucking like so we're we're gonna throw or sentence a kid and take it all the way to trial for stealing a fucking tulip. What a waste of time. But, but two other kids get get away with murder. Like oh, so apparently flowers lives flower lives matter. All flowers flower. matter. How does the heck is this going all the way to trial? The freaking flower. How does the do state spend a, money um, on this? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, apparently, that's it must the be the end of the world because six year olds are going to trial. Also, you said this happens all over the state, and judges throw out the case. Usually. Because apparently, know, like, how, apparently, how you, apparently rare you are can, tulips in this goddamn state? Apparently, uh, complaints about children picking the flowers in neighborhoods kept like gone up or some shit, and they call the police. And like, if they like, normally I hear like, well, most kids they just bring the kid home, but if it's a black kid, they take them directly to the courthouse, and then the judge just throws the damn shit out. But I'm like, like why does it even get to that point? Are tulips rare in this state? I don't think so. I understand, like in Arizona, you can't cut down. The only place taxes, tulips would probably be where, rare as fucking Antarctica. These are tulips. They're everywhere. 
I have some in my backyard. We sell them at Costco. Hey. Now, how difficult are tulips to grow at, in this fucking state? That <laughs> it's a crime. Exactly. Like I thought, maybe it was like the state flower or some shit. Like and remember in then, school they said it was a little bit. Why does it matter? Picture. It's a fucking kid. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, is this Georgia? This sounds like something Brian Kemp would get behind him. That's the difference under- between like a thirteen-year-old and six-year-old is, is tremendous, and the fact that thirteen-year-olds got scotch free and the six-year-olds actually yeah, and in the thirteen-year-olds were more socially conscious than the fucking six-year-old. Damn right. Yeah, so six-year-olds are like, oh, pretty. What yep. the fuck is there to be socially conscious about when it comes to picking a tulip? Not especially the not color? a tulip. I'm fucking. Know. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, a pretty flower. <laughs> The fuck, like you must what? have lost your goddamn mind to even consider the fact that you put a kid to trial on this one. How racist do you have to be to look for a small ass petty crime like picking a tulip to call the cops on a six year old? Dude, oh, always picking my flowers. I'm gonna get your ass this time, motherfucker. Wow, wow. Like flowers that he has. Dude, dude, I'm seriously like still trying to wrap my head around that right now. I'm waiting to hear that some dumbass homeowner shoots a kid for picking her flowers. Well, like like on my end, if I see a kid picking one of my flowers in, in my garden, I'm, I go out there and be like, bro, you want some more? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a flower, even if a, a grown person's grabbing a flower. Probably, like, it's a damn compliment. It's a flower. Your flowers mm-hmm. are nice. Thank you. Take some more. It's insane. That's That's insane. Like, she must, like, like unless he wants these have things a championship for like, flower business or some like, shit. Like unless these flowers are like for some kind of like flower competition, then it'd be like dumbass. Why don't you like grow that in a different part of the house? What or and, even then, and even, even then, and even then, if, even the, if the flower is <clears> picked, <throat> just cut that branch, that one little stem, form the branch, right. cut it down all the way so it looks like there's nothing growing there. Mm-hmm. Or you could like, just uh, shove the shit in a goddamn potato. Plant the potato and regrow some new fucking flowers. Right. And I'm not saying this is just as dumb, but equally dumb is the fact that Prince Williams was actually nominated to be the sexiest bald man alive. Whoa. Yo, who were the runner up? I'm I'm done. <laughs> I honestly I have no idea. Huh? You're on the list. What the you actual prepared. hell? Hey, but probably uh, like number ten thousand. How does how does he beat out like The Rock, Vin Diesel, Jason Sessions? Even dude, Fat Vin Diesel, the dude who played friggin' Luke Cage. Yeah, oh for sure. He yeah for sure. Jamar Moore, Cage. Luke Cage. Yeah, seriously, like that's not a competition. I think it's more of like a, like a stunt to kind of make the royal family look better. In terms it's a political thing or like royal thing. Yeah, like, they probably got paid off. Like apparently, this is what I heard that they some firm searched on or was doing a Google search and found that his name was tacked on to sexy, and people searched it like seventeen point six million times, and that no, is the, his the, name the, was tacked on to fucking sexting little children because Prince William has been accused of pedophilia plenty of fucking times. There you go. So either either they assumed it was sexy and it was like, oh, it's a typo. No. Sexting was probably the search. All I'm going to say, if any of the princes are sexy, it's going to be Prince Harry, not Williams. Shit, and we got to, we got, like, I, like since we're talking about this, I'm going to go ahead and just flash a couple of, you know, qualified candidates just across the screen, just so people know. All right, let's check it out.
and we're back. All right, guys. So, um, speaking of fucking murdering children when it comes to Prince William, um, <laughs> what slide has killed more kids in the world, the entire world, than any other? Which slide? Yes, sir. Oh, man. You got me there. That- is it any of the ones that, like, the Six Flags Water Park and Concord? No, nah, no. Nah, even even better, bro. Really? Sliding your kids down that girl's throat. Oh! <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Like it's your generation, Sending though. them into the deep. Dude, whole yeah. generations have disappeared down that slide. Yep. Entire generations, bro. Gens A through mm-hmm. friggin' T, Down the esophagus you go. <laughs> Were you in there? Yes, remember how you said brown uh, hole nose. You said you had that how you had that uh kid put that baby gun to the back of your head? Yeah. Yeah, well at least you weren't this Milwaukee man and his pregnant wife who actually got shot with a baby gun by a twelve year old boy. Yep. So uh the man's wife were and she is pregnant, were getting into their uh van with their four other kids. And this 12-year-old pretty much ran up out of nowhere and just started unloading a pellet gun on him. And as you guys can see in the photo there. Actually, we got video. We have video. But as you guys can see, they pretty much got pretty badly injured, had to go to the ER. And uh, the husband had to get a pellet removed from his forehead. His wife had one in the cheek, the neck, and a few others uh, along her face. But, and he yeah, shot out a window. In a lot of them were also face. two inches from their eye. Yep, and luckily the kids came out of this unscathed, even though the little bastard shot out a couple of the kid. windows. Fuck that kid. No, they're kids, dumbass. You dumbass. Oh, also, is there any reason as to why you said the kid, this? not their kids? Totally unprovoked. He just ran up on him and started shooting. All right, let's, let's check this video out real quick. Yep. A Milwaukee man and his pregnant wife are recovering tonight after they were shot in the face with a pellet gun over the weekend. Their four young kids just feet away as this all unfolded. Fox 6's Casey Cronus live in Milwaukee with exclusive surveillance video and the surprising age of who police say is responsible. Hey, good evening, Ben. Milwaukee police arrested a 12-year-old boy who they say fired that pellet gun at the couple outside their home. That couple tonight tells us they're shaken up, but grateful their injuries aren't worse. Commotion caught on camera as police say a 12-year-old boy pulled a pellet gun on a Milwaukee couple near 39th and Sheridan. He first shot my wife in the face. And then he shot me up in the forehead. Keith Frank Jr., who has lived in the area for nearly a decade, says around 4 o'clock Saturday, he and his pregnant wife, Hannah, planned to take their four children to the park. Two kids were walking down the alley. And I said, oh, hey, guys, how you doing? Kids and stroller in the car, they were nearly ready to go. When popping sounds stopped Keith in his tracks. And they start shooting at us. I felt one kind of go through my hair, so I like jumped back and I ran after them to go get them. Spotting the boy nearby, Keith says he grabbed the gun, then walked him back to the van. As I got back, my wife was like, our window is shattered. This isn't a toy, this is a weapon. It's dangerous and shooting at me and my wife and my kids in the car. Holding the pellet gun, Keith told the boy he wanted to talk with his parents. I had let him go. He said, Oh, yeah, and he stepped back and he pulled out a second gun. The 29-year-old was shot in the forehead, his wife in the cheek. Police responded, taking the boy into custody. In the emergency room, a doctor was able to remove the pellet from Keith's forehead. Hannah's so deep, she was told she will need plastic surgery. Mine is two inches from my eye, hers is two inches from her eye. It was just completely unprovoked. And we're back. Wow, that's that's fucking wild. Yep. I mean, that's the next mass shooter waiting to happen. Yeah, so the kid did get arrested. Uh, I need to do some follow-up. I can probably update the story next week. But, yeah, the little okay. bastard. Yeah, let us know what, what kind of, you know, hand slap he got. Definitely. <laughs> Damn, old thing. Fact, look it up right now. He is. No mercy. <laughs> he, you know he's not, gonna he not wrong. 
not, he's not wrong. Yeah, you ain't gonna do shit to me. I'm white. This is yeah. right. That's like, yeah, no, slapping the wrist for sure. Cause like, not to steer too far from the story, but do you guys see this uh, Georgia congresswoman get arrested for knocking on the the center, yep. the governor's door? Oh no! What happened there? So recently in Georgia, right? They um they signed this bill where they made it not only like they did not only did they limit where ballot boxes were and hours and like for example, um early voting, but they actually made it illegal to hand out snacks and water. For people waiting in line, Bruh. In the ass. right? So as the as the governor was getting ready to sign this bill, one of the congresswomen went over and like knocked on his door to like essentially have a conversation with him about it. And after knocking three times, the police officers that were at the door arrested her. So they stood there and let her knock three times before arresting her. Yep. Yep. It was just like, all right, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna let you have one. But do it again, do is, it again. I didn't hear it. And people have brought up the fact that a year ago around this time they had protesters go into the building armed and they were spitting on the cops. And these are you know, like Second Amendment protesters complaining about the shutdowns and stuff due to the COVID, and they were like getting a shit done to them. They didn't get escorted that, out of the building. That, that that actually doesn't sound the, the cops that weren't sound right smart at all. nothing. You said Second started. Amendment protesters are upset because of a shit. What the fuck does that have to do with the Second Amendment? Right. But that's yeah, what they want. Yeah. But that's, but like, again, these guys went in there, nothing happened. They had guns on them, fucking body armor. They were, in some cases, having better equipment than the cops. So the now, fact that this this white kid saw that, must have seen that on the news. He knew that he was going to go uh, get away with shooting this couple, yeah. even though it was a BB gun, you know? Mm-hmm. Thank God that he didn't have access to an so, actual gun. Yes. I remember the days when we when when our parents didn't want us to have BB guns. I kind of get And wild. we didn't actually do stupid well, we did stupid shit, but not shit like this. Mm-hmm. More often than not, we just shot at shit or at each other. But no exactly. exactly. So exactly. the case got having... forwarded to the Go district ahead. attorney's office on that twelve year old boy. He did get arrested by Milwaukee PD, and uh, which is what she said. Yep, and yeah, like they're pressing criminal charges against him. So I hope so, and I hope, and I honestly don't hope. I hope that not only does he serve time, but he gets some psychological help because, like, there has to be something wrong going on up there. That kid is six months. Like, I'm just maybe go maybe he was jealous of the family, family and the fact that they're all you know hanging out with their kids, and he's probably home alone. Sometimes it is the case. Hey, listen, the last kid that I saw home alone, he fucking booby trapped his whole house to stop strangers from taking him away. <laughs> Two houses of that. One in New York and one in PA. Thanks. Those are two of my favorite movies growing up. Yeah, the audience yeah, like need to know that. So, um, Jose, speaking of crimes going on, bro. Who the fuck attacks the ice cream man? What? Oh my gosh! So uh, I think that's our next our next segment, though, right? F my are we no. at F my life right now? No, no we're yeah. on. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah, are yeah. Yeah, but you know, whatever. Right, it's girl. not like I'm hosting or nothing. All right, well, <laughs> follow, follow, follow Damn it, guys. Our host, of our host Rick. Um, everyone knows your paletero man, right? He's your, yep. your neighborhood. Hey. I'm sure Jingle Blue made a song about it. <laughs> I think he did. I think he did. But gained many pounds from that guy. I just want that blue bubblegum lollipop. Oh, so what did he say? Beach parks, you know, always there to give you a helping hand. Well, this happened in Oakland, where an you know an ice cream man with his truck was attacked, robbed, and had his you know truck ran into to the point where like it destroyed his you know his cart. Um, he got his back injured, lost all the money he earned that day, and now he's without, you know, a livelihood for his family. So that was the means to su- support his family. Now he can't do it. So, you know, fucking life, brother unfortunately. And was getting it, too. Yeah. Holy crap. He's been doing it for 10 years. Yeah, it was like 10 to 12 years in, in the open neighborhood, so. 
Right, and we got, we got video. Let's check this out. He robbed and run over. The victim says he was simply doing his job when three men robbed him and destroyed his business. Cron Ford live tonight in San Francisco with the details. Dan Thorne spent the day talking with the victim and the folks now coming to his aid to rally around him and help him get back on his feet. Dan. That's right, Jonathan. Well, this victim tells us that he is thankful that he was able to escape this pretty painful ordeal with just minor injuries. But now he's sort of left without a way to provide for his family, and he just doesn't understand why anyone would want to do this to him. Look at how they left our people, y'all. They robbed him and ran him over, ran his cart over, y'all. A neighborhood ice cream man is attacked and robbed in Oakland. This video, shot by a concerned neighbor, shows the cart smashed apart and the victim left shaken. The first shock was just seeing him like, oh, that's our neighborhood ice cream man, Paletero, you know. ¿Qué dice Pri? ¿Cómo anda? ¿Está bien? Yogi says he took the video and shared these pictures to get the word out about what happened. El carro. Aquí. The victim, Hector Hernandez Pitino, says he was pushing his cart along Harper Street and Crosby Avenue Friday afternoon when three men jumped out of their car, demanded ice cream, and then smashed their car into his cart. Lo que quisieron, lo que pudieron agarrar, encima de eso, me echaron el carro encima, destruyendo el carrito de paletas. Pitino is an immigrant from Mexico, and he says he's been working as a paletero for more than a decade. During the attack, his back was injured, but the real pain, he says, says is losing his livelihood they done left him without a car how he gonna work now after sharing this video on social media yogi says his followers are rallying behind patino to get him back on his feet more than ten thousand dollars in donations have poured in from all over the country yogi says these community members need to be protected we got to take care of them as much as we will take care of our own family ice cream man corn man Whatever it is, you know, we got to take care of them. It's our job. It's our job to take care of them. All right, guys, we're back. Holy crap. When you said car ran into with another car, I was thinking that you were talking about, like, the big box trucks. Oh, no, but no. That was a little fucking cart. It's the cart that you walk you walk around with. So. Let's see why it's, that got fucked up. Fuck Dude. these dudes. Fuck them. Yeah, I hope you guys fucking, like, go to hell. Dude, I hope that ice cream eats you from the inside out. Yeah, I, I think the only bright side is that they I just start to... I shit yourself to death. I think so, someone, like, the person that recorded this ended up doing a GoFundMe for him, and I think they raised, like, $10,000, so... <laughs> hopefully I go to the his car and get him back. I, I hope, hope the people who do this shit... invest that into fucking getting an actual car that he could drive around in, looking more pink. That'd be dope. Yep. Yeah, I hope the people who do this to him get the worst form of fucking diabetes and get the worst infections. And diabetes. I hope someone shoves ice cream cones up their ass until they freeze to death. That's insane, bro. I don't see how you do that to somebody trying to make a, a living for themselves. Here's my question. What the fuck motivates you to do stupid shit like this? Like the dude's been going around that neighborhood for years. Probably gave you ice creams when your ass was a kid. And probably gave you some free ones, mm-hmm. too. And it's this insane, is how you bro. fucking repay them. The idea... Don't get me wrong. I don't condone stealing of any sorts. But the idea that you would, you would steal from, like, a mom and pop sort of situation is insane yeah. to me. Because, like, the only people that are truly rubbing your neighborhood are these fucking corporations. Yep. And, and if you think of, like, the and daily now you- earnings... Of like a Balotero man, it's probably not, it's probably not a lot of money that they're making on a day basis. That dude's maybe taking 60, 70 bucks home a day. Yeah, like, nah, I think it's a little bit more than that. Probably more, but you know, it's it's basically just you know, it's not minimum wage for sure. Day to day kind of stuff, man. It's not like they're loaded with. If guys. He's able to support his family with that, with what he does. More power to him. I, I hope he got all his shit back. I hope he gets all, back on his feet, and I hope he 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 his back heals all that. I hope that GoFundMe does well, and he raises enough money to see a chiropractor and shit like that. You know, hey, let's can not, we post um, a can we post a link to a, GoFundMe in our description? This video, we can. Yeah, yeah somebody's gonna look at uh, I'll look that up. Yeah, we'll yeah. look it up. We'll definitely post one. You know, you know which GoFundMe we're not gonna post. Mm-hmm. The Kylie Jenner fucking GoFundMe for her makeup artist. Like, bitch, <laughs> oh, so you, much cheap that, bitch. you should have paid for that shit yourself. 
Man, I saw that. Hell up out of hell. Dude. Who does that? 60,000. $60, you're a billionaire. That's a drop in the bucket. You waste that on Mercedes leases probably in a year. You waste that on bullshit ass little bitty wallet purses. You waste that on condoms like, for all the dicks you're going to suck that year. People oh, actually donate oh, this year. Kidding. It's insane that anybody even donated it. Like, how do you how do you wrap your mind around the idea that this billionaire is asking you to help you raise sixty thousand dollars? Didn't that chick who put gorilla glue in her hair get like ninety thousand from GoFundMe? But that's different. This is well, not really. But I mean, the the case is here. You got a billionaire celebrity, part of a rich family, asking the public for money to help her friend. You're telling me you're that damn petty that you can't fucking pay for that? You tell me you're that stupid to actually listen? Yes. Well, there's that, too, because I'll be honest. If I was a billionaire and any of you guys needed any surgery, I'd pay for that shit. Straight up. Because you guys are my legitimate friends. But you can't call this person your your fucking friend, especially your makeup artist, that helped build your makeup brand. Because if he didn't have the skills that he had in applying it, your makeup brand wouldn't have taken off the way it did. But yeah, so I hope that this Paletero man fucking, you know, does well with his GoFundMe and gets enough money not only to get his shit back, but to take a small trip with his family because he deserved it. I hope he gets enough to start his own franchise so he never has to worry about this shit again. You know how I hope doesn't raise enough money? These people out here fucking stealing catalytic converters. Fuck Bro. these people. Oh, yeah, fuck those people. Bruh. So, as y'all know, I'm a victim of having my catalytic converter stolen from Jose's house. I remember that. Oh, shit. yeah. <laughs> My poor little 90 freaking Camry. God damn, bro. That shit pissed me off so much. That bitch sounded like a 66 Chevelle after that. Please don't do that. So, yeah, apparently, because the rise in uh, precious metals have gone even higher than gold, there are certain metals that are in catalytic converters that can be sold for a fucking small fortune. Mm-hmm. Which is why they're stealing them. So let's go. I, I got a real. I got a clip real quick. Let's go ahead and roll it. Let's go. Your car that in some cases may actually be worth more than the car itself. Yeah, and thieves want it, and they are targeting specific groups in what police say is a surge of these types of crimes. Under your car, under everyone's car, is a part that thieves desperately want, and they've been getting them, says Sergeant Dan Adams of GRPD. So it's one of those things that we always seem to be fighting one way or another. And right now, Kent County has seen a surge in thefts of catalytic converters. It causes, you know, around $1,000 worth of damage to have it replaced. A few other Fox 17 stories have profiled the same types of thefts in other West Michigan counties. Thieves aren't even after the converter. They're after the element inside, rhodium. The silver precious metal is corrosion resistant and, according to indices, is listed as 15 times more valuable than gold, and that value doubled last year alone. That tiny amount of metal is causing big problems for victims of the thefts like Stephanie Adams with Friends of GR Parks. They had a big tree planting event this weekend, but couldn't use their only pickup. Our truck was making a really weird sound, so we took it to the shop, and lo and behold, someone had cut out our catalytic converter. Stephanie's truck has since been fixed with Alba of Insurance, but even her mechanic said he's been seeing an increase in this issue, as have a lot of her friends. I started reaching out to a few of my nonprofit friends and found out this is actually happening quite a bit more than we had thought. And GRPD isn't unaware. Sergeant Adams, who we should mention is married to Stephanie, says nonprofits like hers, church vans, car lots, and small company vehicles are most at risk because those vehicles get low use and often aren't parked in secure lots. Even still, Stephanie says their truck was behind nine-foot fencing, still falling victim to a crime becoming more and more common in Kent County. I was locked up, fenced in area, gated. You know, people are, are willing to go through hoops to take this part off of the vehicles. And Sergeant Adams says that detectives do work with local garages and scrap metal yards to track down stolen converters. He recommends securing your car if you can and parking where there is plenty of lighting. But even as we said, nine foot fencing, there was barbed wire on that fence. Really great length. Someone still got to to get that. That's wild. I learned something new today. We all have them. I'd never heard of it until last week. And we're back. Wow. I I, do. It's just such an unnecessary nuisance. 
I definitely feel like cracking my own friggin' catalytic converter open and getting in the middle. Dude, seriously, like, gosh, you're probably, like, you're you're probably getting enough money back to to pocket some of the money and fucking buy a new catalytic converter. Yeah. For real. That's, that's insane. That's, that's crazy to me because I've heard of like people getting caught with like up to like a thousand or more. And each one, because it's over five hundred dollars, at least in California, is like a fucking three year sentence. So you can imagine you could probably rack up enough to go to jail for life while stealing these things. I don't think you I don't think you'd worry about going to jail for life. But Marcus, do do tell me about how this um Sacramento pizza shop got an apology for from a smash and dash situation. <laughs> All right, so I thought I thought the dude like broke into it and like went and stole some shit. But after I watched the video, so basically this is exactly what happened. So uh, uh, at night, like some teens were walking down the street, and this one kid like turns around, grabs like a sewer grate, and just chucks it into the window, and it takes off. Uh, then you know a couple days, like the owner's pissed, like he's got to pay for it to get it fixed, and uh, come to find out, like. Some dude came and like delivered a letter with an apology in there. And actually, let's go ahead and roll the clip. Now to a bizarre pizza shop apology. The owner of a restaurant in East Sacramento, first shocked by a smashed window, then gets an anonymous note saying sorry. That's not all the owner received. CBS 13's Ryan Hill has more on the unexpected delivery. For someone to do that, I didn't understand why they would want to do that. It looked like it was just a, a random act. A smash and dash at Steve's Pizza in East Sacramento, leaving owner Rodney Ibanez baffled. His shop security cameras capturing a group walking by a couple of weeks ago, when one of them picks up a sewer grate and chucks it at his business. Who literally in their right mind would want to pick up a grate and smash it through somebody's window, right? You know, That's just something you don't normally do. An unusual act followed by another Wednesday. Someone who Rodney says wasn't seen on his cameras throwing the grate, dropping off an envelope for him. Inside a letter, apologizing. Someone was trying to take ownership for it, which is all we really wanted in the first place. But that's not all. Also in the envelope, something Rodney's familiar with. Cheese. Dough. In all, $2,000. They took ownership of what happened, apologized, and uh, left some cash. The letter signed by the more vulgar word for jerk who broke your window. The author saying it was a blackout blunder and that he didn't even know what he had done until a friend told him. You know, if you look at the video footage, I mean, this person really wasn't sober, you can tell. He was just swerving around a little bit. The admitted vandal, adding how ashamed he is, and he hopes to keep police out of things. I mean, they didn't come in and talk to me face to face. I mean, I'd like that. We'll sit down and have some pizza and we can talk about it, right? A window shattered, an apology given, a businessman ready to move on. At this point, someone apologized. They tried to take care of it financially. I mean, it's water under the bridge. Ibanez closed his goal. <laughs> and we're yeah. back, right? Right. Oh, so, shit, we're back. We're back. Yeah. So a, this dude not only video. apologized, but he sent a $2,000 uh, check to pay for the window. And I'm apparently... so drunk the night before you feel guilty about this shit. Well, apparently mm -hmm. he was blackout drunk and did not even know. <laughs> didn't even know what he did. So... When his friends told him, he felt so bad. He, you know, wrote the letter and sent them the money. And I was like, like, what fucked me up was the owner was like, like, I kind of wish he would have just came by and like talked to me. I was like, bro, he would have busted him over his head. Who are you kidding? Dude. Not if he had that check. Would have beat him with that glass that he Not broke. Not if he had that check, though. <laughs> I'm like, hey, thanks for the check. Yeah. Right. No, but Here's saying, if, he, if he had that check, he probably wouldn't have been so upset. Yeah. Like here you go, handing him a two thousand dollar check and I'm like, what the fuck is this for? Oh, I was the one that broke your window. I was fucking blacked out drunk. My bad. Please the shit. At least that was like, thanks saw for you the honesty, but it was only fifteen hundred. Can I interest you in just taking a pizza with you while you go? Hey. They'd be shit. like That's not what I would have said. Thank hmm. you. At least the apology didn't take as long as just remember like Oh. So that bitch, it cost me five hundred dollars to fix that window. <laughs> Fifteen hundred dollars. So, do you guys know what's better than sixty nine? Nah. No. Well, eighty eight, because you get eight twice. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. 
I was about to say, Julio, that go over your head? Because you look confused. Nah, bro. bro. That sounds nice. <laughs> you know, you'd be the one doing the eating. Yeah. So, um, Julio, what's going on with this fucking, what is it, Peeps and Pepsi doing some kind of fucking collab? Yeah, it looks like they're coming out with one of the like, craziest uh, creations ever as far as soft drinks go. And it's probably going to be one of the sweetest. So they're coming out with a limited edition uh, drink where they're what making did he like, say? a marshmallow flavor of Peeps with Pepsi. And they're going to come out in like little mini cans that are the colors of Peeps, like the pink, the yellow, the blues. And it's a limited edition thing, but it's so limited that they're only going to give them to people who win them by marking the hashtag hanging with the hanging with my peeps on Twitter on the Pepsi Twitter page. Am I the only Can one you? who literally has to say this, but marshmallows don't have a flavor? Am I the one that has to say this, but fucking peeps suck ass and I would hate that, that taste. So if I hashtag hanging mm-hmm. with my peeps, can you just promise me not to send me one? <laughs> yeah. Bro, it, it's probably just gonna be all foam. Damn, Please it's do gone. Not bring this to market. It is a horrible idea. And yet, you're the one who brought it up. Oh, I thought it was stupid. That's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, that's that's why it's under. What are you doing, bro? It's I, I it's insane. Her- I I. What do you think, Jose? Do you do? Would you drink this? And not at all. I think it's just as crazy as the idea that I heard it on this radio of like um, bacon flavored shoelaces. What? What? Yeah, what? Friends with dogs? Product, but, but, like, who wants bacon flavored shoelaces? <laughs> Why would you want bacon flavored shoelaces? Who wants bacon flavored anything other than fucking dogs? Right. Uh, I, I, ain't nobody got time for that. Just, like, uh, give me like know. fuck the f- give me the bacon. Some of the yeah, dogs are going to chew your shoes up and fuck them up. I mean, with his peeps and Pepsi, I don't, I don't see who the target Bacon audience is. Horrible. Shoe, yeah, your dog's going to fuck your Probably shoes Probably peep up. lovers. And, and Marcus. Fuck your shoes. Marcus, are you excited about the fact that once you get your vaccination, you can get free donuts at Krispy Kreme? <laughs> Bruh. Mm. That boy in me is excited. But my blackness is like no. Wait, hold it. I gotta. You know, are you just? Are you just? You can't get the free donut unless you get the vaccine. Okay. I mean, I, I understand how how untrusting minorities are about vaccines based on We're the history of what, what's happened. Oh well, yeah, yeah so that's that, history that, of that action. definitely puts you. That definitely puts you as a crossroads, doesn't it? <laughs> like you got me at a box here. Just <laughs> is, it, is it a donut box? <laughs> but it's one donut. donut here. That's what fucks one. Up. Apparently, but it's one donut I got a day. A, I got a clip. Yeah, that was yeah, like one donut a day for like, like a year. Yeah, let's check this out. Krispy Kreme is giving away sweet rewards to vaccinated people. Anybody who shows a completed vaccination card at a Krispy Kreme location can get a free glazed donut. The best part, this is not a one-time offer. A vaccinated person could get one free donut every day through 2021. The company also says it will give employees up to four hours of paid time off to get vaccinated. Other companies like Target and Trader Joe's are also paying workers to get the shot. All right, boys, and we're back. Okay, so interesting video by Krispy Kreme. I also heard that uh, Office Depot and Staples will laminate your COVID-19 your COVID vaccine card for free. Bitch, if you that? don't just throw some scotch tape all around that motherfucker. <laughs> Also, what the fuck is a COVID-19 card? It's like a card they give you when you get your shots. Doesn't that sound kind of stupid? It, it really does. But, I mean, let's be honest. It, it, it sounds stupid as shit. But you technically, I guess you would want that because every Karen out there in the world would just go around proclaiming that they've got their shot. Mm-hmm. Good point. It's probably going to be used for travel. You have to show that. Yeah. You have to go, like, international. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Show me your papers. Yeah, pretty much. Now, now people know what every Mexican feels like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was born here. I don't care. Except this time, you get to stay here. <laughs> That's insane. Dude. You know what else is insane? Showing up to somebody's house fucking armed and then asking them to apologize to you. <laughs> oh, man, you, you can't make this up. So this happened yeah. in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. So there was uh, two armed white men. They were accompanied by 13 other people. They were, I guess, looking for a, a missing girl. And they end up showing up to uh, um, this woman's house. And she was with her son at the time. And they you know, demanded to go inside her, her home looking for this missing kid. You know, so she took it around and said no. This ended up going to court. Um, and the two armed white men were acquitted. But that wasn't enough for them. So now they're asking for a sit down with the mom and the son to clear out any misunderstandings and also get an apology from them. Uh, fuck the, you. Because during the trial, I guess they were painted as racist. And now they want a public apology. You're not getting yeah, a public no, um, apology. You, you can go your way into a black gun. person's home accusing them of kidnapping someone and you didn't even have the right information in the first place, you fucking dumbass. Stop also, you can go ahead and shove that gun that you showed up with right up your ass and then fire off a few rounds for me. Yep. Bang, 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 click, click, reload, bang, 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 bang. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't care whether you showed up to a white person's house, an Asian person's house, a black person's house, a Mexican person's house. You showed up armed. If anybody should be apologizing, it should be you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You're, lucky that, that, you're lucky that you woman didn't have on. a gun. You're lucky that woman did not have a gun and just empty the clip in both of you motherfuckers' faces. Seriously. But she had every motherfucking right. You, are you, you came to a woman's house. You're going to try to enter their, their dwelling? Like, you're not fucking cops. You're a fucking woman. What the hell's wrong with you idiots? Fuck their dwelling. Like, if you come into my yard, my dude, I'm emptying that clip. Uh, you take one more step, you're gonna lose some more too. Get the fuck I'm, a, I'm gonna take a book. Page. I'm gonna take a page from their book, and I'm like, "Hey, what are you doing on my yard, boy?" <laughs> <laughs> you want to pick a tulip? Give <laughs> 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 me my flower bed. <laughs> Give me a reason. Pick my tulips. <laughs> that is my serious. So now they want an apology. Yeah, I mean, I think most people, if they were acquitted after W, right, they, they got away with one. But to ask for an apology when they have no right to ask for one, that's just insane. Yeah, we, got uh, we, we were portrayed as racist because we came to a black home and accused them of kidnapping. I'm and surprised they didn't have white hoods on. Oh, man. You, you say you got video of this, Bulls? Yeah, let's go ahead and roll the clip. Let's check this out. I see these guys in front of me and they're holding guns and there looks like there's one in a uh, police uniform and he's the one that speaks to me first he says uh, we're looking for a missing girl uh, we were given this address and we were given your name and we were told that she's here so we're gonna enter in Coming to the door like that with a mob of people with guns, what do we expect? What were the intentions? Like, what if he was the person that they were looking for? Or what if I was not at home? What would have happened? I don't want to have that conversation i don't want him to be a statistic all right guys and we're back wow that's all i can say wow this this world we're living in man seems like every week something like this privilege right wow we have the privilege i wish i could pull that kind of shit off oh you don't 
Your ass is going to so, go to jail. Right? All right, so do you guys um know what the seven names for the the dwarves in fucking in the movie were rejected? So it's Snow White. You guys know how there were seven dwarves? Yeah. Yeah, rejects? Do you guys know what the seven names that were rejected were? I don't even know there were rejects. What were they? It was, there was Pizzy, Hansy, Horny, Fruity, Shizzo, Rapey, and Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Glenn. everybody was more concerned about Glenn. Yeah, I'd be worried about Glenn. I'm worried about Schizo. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also seems alarming. Oh, Hansy. Schizo might, Schizo might keep me safe Take from Glenn. No, Schizo might be sitting on your bed stabbing his fucking palm like I saw a butterfly yesterday. That's okay. Glenn would be sitting in your bed ready to stab you. He, no, he'd be stabbing me. Mm. Oh, Glenn stabbing you, by the way. Hi. I think Rapey and Horny would be ready for like a a collaboration. Hi, boys. Anybody else got anything they want to say tonight? No. No. Nope. All right. So I think that wraps it up for us tonight, boys. So to all, all our, our all our followers, I hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. Please remember to like, like and subscribe on both TikTok, IG, um, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, make sure to follow us on Spotify and hit that like button. I hope everybody has a good night tonight. Yep. Beat me up, Scotty. All right. Peace out. Hey, bulls disappeared. All right, boys. We're clear. Yep. Yeah.